Hello everyone, Heap here with another video. Today I would like to talk about something I have had experience with for over 3 years, and this is multiplayer game development. I'm not going to teach you RPCs, commands, sync files, instead I'm going to talk about something engine independent, how you should be thinking while making online games. There are three important things involving multiplayer game development, they are user experience, security, and your time. Trying to make one without any previous knowledge, you will definitely trade at least one away for the others. If you want a game with good experience and security, you will have to trade your time. What I can help you with is saving as much time as possible by getting you on the right track. So we will be focusing on getting good experience and security. Good security is achieved through server authoritative networking model where the server decides what happens, the client only sends the input. A common mistake is to use input class or any other local environment dependent class on the server side. Don't do this, send everything needed to make the move but also so that the inputs modified externally wouldn't give the player an advantage. For that, use clamping on the server side. So the client can just send the input and wait for the server to move, it all sounds great at first, but you will be soon hit by the worst problem in multiplayer games, latency. The player will have to wait a couple hundred of milliseconds to move, and this is awful. This is where we get to the user experience. For all the actions that do not require constant player input, like opening a door, we can use a completely server authoritative model. For all other actions like movement, we could just send the position of the player to the server, but we trade our security for this. So what do we do? Predict. What should happen is this. The player collects the inputs, stores them in an array for use later and sends them to the server. The server then moves the player and sends back the result. In the meantime, the client moves the player locally trying to predict where the server will move it and saves the result to an array. Once the server sends back the result, it gets compared by the client's one inside the results array. If it is 100% correct, we do nothing. But if there is a slightest difference, the player sets its state to the one server has sent and replaces all the inputs that happened after the inputs we got the result for. This last part is called client-side reconciliation. It is really hard to get this perfectly at first, and almost perfect implementation exists in my unit controller. Link in the description, just check it out. This is cool for the character movement using character controller, but then we get to the physics part. What do we do with the vehicles? We sure cannot predict precisely where the car will be due to the way physics works. The blocker for this is the client-side reconciliation being impossible. So what do we do? Well, we can only trade some security away to keep the good experience. Make the client send the input and the result, and if the result's difference is below a certain threshold, then the server moves the vehicle to the client's position. A hacker might get a slight speed boost, maybe a bit of traction, but he definitely won't be able to teleport and fly around. Then we get to the shooting. If we just send the shoot command to the server, the client won't be able to hit a moving target because of latency. What the server has to do is called lag compensation. The server calculates the latency of the player, moves all the objects to the positions they would have been on the client side and only then shoots a raycast. This is a bit of a tedious work and requires storing all shootable or even moving objects positions to arrays. Just make sure you remove the old positions to prevent a memory leak. Most other actions like opening a door do not need to be predicted by the player or anything like that. The player will be able to deal with a bit of delay. Sure, you can implement prediction for these, but if the prediction is incorrect, you will have to find a way to reset it. Other than that, for the practical tutorials, check out this place called YouTube. There are hundreds of videos explaining how to use Unity Multiplayer. I won't make a tutorial for this. All I hope is that I help you get an idea how the multiplayer games should be made. If you like this video, hit the like button, subscribe, tell me what you want to see next. I have planned a video about virtualization on Linux. Tell me what was wrong and see you later. My name is Heap and I'm out.